Welcome to another mini video from tudigamartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create and work with texture images. Adding grunge effects and textures via photos is an easy way to enhance your designs. It's a quick way to add patterns and mask the clean and sharp look of the vector shapes. Let's take the canyon scene and bring in some photos. I have a whole library of photos I take whenever I go for a walk and see something that looks interesting might make a cool pattern. Some of them I've already enhanced in Affinity Photo. I took photos of rocks, pavement, patterns in the sand, anything that has a strong enough contrast, nice lines, interesting cracks or great colors. When mixing your photos with the design, it helps to have an either white or black background so that those colors can be filtered out by the layer blend modes. Multiply would hide the white while screen would hide the black. Let's take one of the close-up photos of a rock texture, drag it into the scene. You can also copy and paste or use the file merge to import the image. It will be an embedded object, that way we can easily replace it. At the top of the menu it gives me the name, the size and the option to replace it. I take the photo and drag it inside the rock shape. In the layer panel I drag the photo inside the curve of the rock. Set to multiply, only the darker colors will be mixed with the colors of the design. Whenever I use grunge patterns, I usually go with multiply and a high contrast in the image. This one still has a lot of gray in it, so I start by adjusting the curves. At the bottom of the layer panel, I choose an adjustment layer. The tone curve can be adjusted for the whites on the right side and the darks on the left side. I alter the curve from a straight diagonal to a curve that brings in the darks stronger and makes the lights even lighter. When I set the image to multiply now, there is less change to the original colors. To increase the contrast even more, I add another adjustment layer, this time it's posterize. It will take out the mid-tones and give me less colors for the image. The big advantage of dealing with the adjustment layer straight in Affinity Designer is everything can be changed and altered. I can change the settings of the posterize and see what happens if I reduce the number even further. I get a rather strong pattern, a little higher and it's a little softer. So I'll stick with that and then add an HSL adjustment layer on top of that to take out all the color. This is done by shifting the saturation all the way to the left. When I compare the before and after, it's quite obvious that there's a lot less detail and a lot more contrast in the new version, which is exactly what we need in order not to change the original colors too much. By setting this one back to multiply and reducing the opacity, the result is not quite what I was after. This texture looks more like marble or granite, while the lines go horizontally, so it's not really the right pattern for that. But I'll just use it on the ground, see what happens there. I cut it and place it inside drag it inside in the layer panel so it is clipped inside there and give it a transparent gradient set it to overlay rather than multiply this way the white comes into play as well and changes my base color a little bit by squashing and using the transparent gradient i hide the fact that the texture does not have any perspective deformation with the lowered opacity I think this works fine for the ground. Let's try and find another texture for the rock. Instead of going with more granite, I try something totally different. This is a moss lichen grows that might just give me an interesting pattern. I place that inside my design, clip it to the shape of the rock and set it to overlay. This way it lightens up my image as well as darkens it in the dark parts. 
The result is a nice intricate pattern that works with the rock. I adjust the vector shapes, their opacity is a little too low to stand out and look for a second material that I can put onto the rock, something that goes with the lines. Let's use this photo of a paper bark tree. It has the horizontal lines even though they are slightly angled but put on top along with the lines of the rock. It works nicely. I blur the highlights and the shadows just a little bit to match the new look. Seeing the textures are placed in the clipping mask it's no problem to move or scale them. For the smaller rocks I choose a more detailed photo of small pebble. I copy it and paste it inside. Seeing the rocks are a symbol, the copy is immediately placed in all the copies of this symbol. I invert this layer. That way the textures look more like speckles on top. I add a transparent gradient to fade the texture from the top to the bottom and adjust the layer blend mode from the multiply via the overlay to a linear light. I lower the opacity of the texture layer to just make it a little more subtle. I copy the texture and place it into the other rocks. They are symbols as well, so nearly all my rocks should be covered now. I reposition it slightly, adjust the transparent gradient and then move on to the skull. I use the same pattern on this one, just position it inside a shape I created prior. It is a boolean add of all the shapes that make up the skull. It's basically a silhouette with no fill and no stroke and I place the texture inside of this one. So far I have placed the textures inside objects but I can place textures on top of everything. Let's find a texture that comes in from one corner. This is a pattern on the sand. I adjust the curves and set it to multiply, set the opacity to very low, just 20% and duplicate and mirror it to fit the other corner. Another pattern, some stain in the sand. I do the same thing, I adjust the curve to make the sand go completely white so I'm just left with the stain and set it to a lower opacity with the layer blend mode to multiply. I reuse that stain and put it on the other side of the image. By using six different textures, I transformed the image from a plain vector design to something that looks a lot richer, a lot more detailed. You can see the difference when I fade between the two. This is the starting point. The plain vector design without any textures. It is fairly simple. Take photos of things you see that might make a texture. Just snap a photo, bring it into Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo and work with the different layer blend modes. Use clipping masks and edit your photos with adjustment layers or combinations of several adjustment layers. Play around with what works for what photo and I'm sure you'll get great results in no time. I originally recorded about an hour of video footage with two more scenes but it's too much for a quick video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make this an extended tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on my channel or on my blog and I will see you again soon.